What's going on you guys? Welcome back to the channel for another Legacy GT video. If you haven't been following this build series, there's like four or five different videos before this of all the progress we've made on this car. I'm gonna link the playlist up in the corner here. Be sure to check that out so you understand what's going on and you're up to date with this build. But today, we're gonna be restoring the front wheel wells on the car, getting fresh paint match Raptor liner in there and they're gonna look so good, you guys. I can't wait to show you. All right, so here's what we're starting out with. If you've watched the previous videos, I kind of explained what went on here, but we've got a couple different, you know, bare spots from the dry ice blasting where I was trying to get this stuff off. Uh, eventually, I just decided that that was not the most efficient way to do this and left it looking like this. So I've gone along with those wire wheels here and, you know, tested around, you know, spots that look like this where it had already come off. Uh, you can see it's getting it around the edges there, so we'll just have to work our way on that. On spots where there's been, you know, a complete spot of undercoating, this is kind of what we're working with. Quick blast with that wheel gets it worn down. So it's gonna be a tedious process, but we're gonna go along and get this all cleaned up in here and get it down to the bare surface where this kind of primer material is just roughed up and we'll clean that up and use that as our base for the Raptor line. <laughs> So here's what we're working with. I picked up this Raptor liner kit. It's a protective urethane coating. And what that comes with is four of these 24 ounce bottles of the tintable base is what they call it. it. Comes with the hardener. And then I bought a tint that matches the blue exterior of the car to mix in with this. So the Raptor liner actually matches the vehicle like it did from the factory. So it comes with this gun, which you basically get all set up here like this. And that is gonna just hook directly into the bottle here. So. The kit's pretty comprehensive. I've watched a few tutorials on how to do this. It seems pretty straightforward and multiple people have told me that it's not that complicated to actually do this at home. Hence why I opted to try this myself. So we gotta get the surface prepped. I picked up these uh, nylocks is what they're called, but it's basically like a wire wheel alternative. Uh, it uses like a synthetic material that's supposed to last much longer and also be safer, which I am totally about because last time I used a wire wheel, I had these little pieces of like, metal bristle stuck in my legs all over the place. So I turned the camera off for a bit and just worked at this and still have a little bit to go. So I'm gonna show you guys this last little bit here, but I've been going at a lot of this honestly with just a razor blade because this stuff was thick enough that I could literally just get behind it and kind of slice it off and remove a lot of it. So I'm gonna tackle the rest of this, but the goal is to get it down to all bare metal and then we'll apply a new coat of primer before we put on the Raptor liner. I think we are pretty much finished with this wheel well. The areas where I've left the seam sealer is totally intentional because this stuff is paintable. And in hindsight, I actually would have tried to leave it around the top part and bottom part of this as well, just to leave that as OEM as possible and then put primer and Raptor liner over it. But this is all looking really good. I think we'll match the factory line for the Raptor liner coming right down here. Obviously get this whole area here. We're gonna be taping all of this off. It's gonna look great. But this is just the first half, so let's go take a look at the other side. Now, coming over to this side may seem a little daunting, and no, I'm not look exactly looking forward to this, but I picked up a couple new tools that I think will be very helpful with this process. This one is just a single edge razor blade that pops out of this thing. So if that can get us close enough that we can use that to scrape off some of the underliner, I think that'll work really well. And then this one is a stiff chisel edge putty knife. So because I had so much success cutting a lot of this off with the razor blade on the other side and then wheeling away what was left, I'm gonna try to do that again on this side. And I'm honestly so excited to do this because look at the factory job. You can see there's just like a big empty spot right there. It's not done very well up there. We'll have a nice clean line coming down through here. It's gonna look really good. I'm excited, so let's get it.
guys, it has been a few days since I picked up the camera because I had a super busy week at work last week and just couldn't get out to the garage as much as I had hoped to. And when I did, I spent three or four days, you know, one full day and then like three days after work just prepping this car. And this has taken way longer than I wanted to, but let me give you guys an update on where we're at. So both wheel wells, I would say, are like 90% prepped. I ended up removing all of what I thought was seam sealer because it was all just part of the undercoating and to get a nice uniform look on both sides, I stripped it down to the bare metal. We need to go over and scuff this and then clean it with a wax and grease remover. But there's a little bit left on the bottom side of the car, but there's a little bit left on the bottom side of the car here. Basically, I'm thinking we'll take the Raptor liner all the way across this here and then potentially onto the rail a little bit there so that that metal is protected as well. But in order to do that, I'm gonna pull these guys down and we're gonna get this last little bit of stuff cleaned up so we can get the surface primed and ready for the Raptor liner. Okay, after what feels like forever, the passenger side of the car is all done and prepped. We've got exposed metal everywhere we need it. Got that frame rail all nice and cleaned up. And just to give you a comparison, here's the other side. And that's what that other side looked like when we started. So, time to do it all again. Pretty sure I'm finally done with all of the undercoat removal and I'm sitting here looking at the car like if I never had to do this again I would be more than okay with that and then it hit me I think we're gonna be doing this exact process again on the 240 with much more surface area because we only did like the front wheel wells on this car okay so like I showed you earlier wheel wells done down below we've got it all stripped off where we're gonna be spraying Raptor liner now we just need to go over and scuff it use a wax and grease remover on it and obviously cover the entire car, get anything that we don't want overspray on, taped off, but made some good progress tonight. Believe it or not, this was like about five hours of work just since I picked up the camera earlier. So you can see why this process is taking so long, but I'm gonna come back tomorrow and start getting stuff masked off. Okay, so we are on what feels like day 100 of this Raptor liner process. I'm sick and tired of it. I'm ready to be done with it, but the prep work is done. So as you can see behind you, I've got the car covered with one of our disposable car covers from Griot's garage, and I covered all of the rest of the cars in the garage as well, just to protect from overspray. So we're gonna get this back up in the air and start masking off in the wheel wells and underneath the car to make sure that we get everything protected that we don't wanna get primer or Raptor liner on. the wheel well mostly masked off 
and now it's time to finish the prep work. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and scuff this up with some 220 grit sandpaper, just to get a nice scuff over the whole thing so that our primer sticks to it really well. And then before we prime it, we'll wipe it down with a wax and grease remover to make sure the surface is super clean and the primer sticks to it really well. I cannot believe I'm saying this, but after days and days of prep work, the wheel wells are finally ready for primer. So, these have been stripped down of all of the undercoating, I sanded everything with a 220 grit sandpaper, scuffed it with Scotch-Brite, went over it with a wax and grease remover, and we have obviously masked everything off. And because there's so much stuff on the car, it's not just a bare chassis, masking everything off took quite a while. So, like, th this was a process for sure, but we are finally ready to spray some primer. So I picked up some of this Spray Max Epoxy Gray Primer, and because I don't have an actual paint gun, I needed something that had an activator in it and could be sprayed on with a spray can. So this was what the paint shop recommended. Use this little red guy here to push the activator in and mix it in with the resin and then spray away. And I think this has to be used up within like four days or something, and then it goes bad and dries up. But let's go ahead and get this on the car. So the dry time between coats is pretty quick. I believe we need to put two or three coats on, and then we'll let it dry for a little bit before we put the actual Raptor liner on. Oh, and I forgot to show you guys, I got nice and creative with the plastic down here and taped it up to the underside of the chassis so that no overspray goes back. And as you can see, we've got everything masked off super well, so this should go very smoothly. So the wheel wells are completely prepped and ready for the Raptor. I went over it with red Scotch-Brite and then wiped it down with wax and grease remover and then blew it off with some compressed air just to make sure there was no dust in there. So the next part in this whole process is getting everything mixed. So we've got the actual Raptor itself, the Raptor hardener, this is our real blue pearl tint so that the Raptor actually matches the exterior of the car. So we take this, which is 24 ounces, and we add eight ounces of the hardener to this for a total of 32 ounces, and then we add 10% of our tint, so no more than 3.2 ounces of the tint. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this stuff mixed so that we can start spraying it on the car. And after weeks of working on this, we finally have the new undercoating done. Look how good that looks. The color match is awesome. I'm super happy. For my first time doing this, I think I did a really good job. Obviously there's a few things I learned that I could do differently in the future, but overall, 
this really turned out awesome. Uh, like I said earlier in the video, this part's all covered by a wheel well, so I just pretty much matched the OEM line for the undercoating and moved it over a little bit. So that's the reason that it's not done over there as well. But man, that just looks so good. And I teased it on Instagram a little bit, but I picked up the rear spec B aluminum control arms from the Vapor Honer today. So we got the full set. It's gonna look so good on the car. Well, that was definitely one of the more tedious processes that I've ever done on a car. That literally took weeks to get done. I was working on it when I had time, which made for very little content, which sucks. I hate not putting out content. But now that this is done, we can officially finally start putting parts back on the car and getting this thing back together. So with this video, we're back to the weekly content. I'm gonna do two videos a week here for a couple more weeks, and then I'll be gone out of the country for two weeks, but I'll be doing at minimum one video a week while we're gone to keep the content going and back into our normal routine when I get back. I hope you guys are stoked. If you're loving this Legacy GT build series, be sure to check out the two videos I've put up here on the screen. It does help me a lot if you watch these. Throw the video a thumbs up, and I will see you in the next one.